the time machine. Oh, wow! What kind of device is that? Maybe an alarm clock? No, this is a time machine! Beep, 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 beep! Time machines, they don't exist. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what a shame. I learned you, that. You, studied you, that. You, you, well done, Tula. You, 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 you. Oh, oh. What did I just bump into? What do you mean, what? Into a time machine. But I thought time machines aren't for real. Of course they are. You get in and take off for the future. Or the past. Splendid. Lots of us would love to be able to travel in a time machine. Maybe to go back in time and fix a bad grade. Or to get a peek into the future. Of course it would be interesting. But time travel isn't possible. And thank goodness! Just imagine how mixed up everything could get. Someone brings back a dinosaur from the past, while someone else brings aliens from the future. No one would need to invent anything. Appliances would sit unused, and fixies would have no work to do. It's awful! So you've got no idea of the answer. I studied this, but I don't remember. Too bad, because tomorrow we've got a hard test. Make sure you're prepared. I'm sure I'm gonna fail. You're gonna pass? You studied all of this, right? So? So you just need to stop worrying so much, that's all. I wish I could. <laughs> Poor girl. How can we help her? Hey, I know how. This morning, Tula believed that that thing over there is a real time machine. Sounds like an anti-scientific plan. Stop worrying. It's simple. We'll send you to tomorrow. You'll sit down, take the test, and come right back here. I wish I could go. It's like a dress rehearsal. The main thing's not to worry. Then what do I do? Uh, you just pull on that wire and you'll get them back. Well, time to go. Wow, it's tomorrow. Hi there. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Grandpus got sick, so I'll be giving you your tests. I'm scared. Don't worry. It's just a rehearsal. Well then, who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! Oh, so cool! Awesome! That wasn't scary at all. Impressive. By the way, what's wrong with the professor? Uh, Grandpus! Uh, you know, don't you? A bolt fell on his head. You dropped it, remember? I did? Yeah, yesterday. I'm not sure I like this future. Well, how did it go there? Later. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Oh! Leave this on until tomorrow. What is this? Come back! No! If I do, I could hurt you! Me? What for? Wouldn't it be incredible to travel into the future and see what you will become? Unfortunately, that's only possible in our dreams. But if you have a dream and aren't afraid of challenges and setbacks, your future can turn out just the way you imagined. Do you want to become a champion? Then you need to start your training right away! Do you dream of becoming the best programmer in the world? Then first pull up that grade in math class! Do you dream of sailing the oceans? Then you'll need to do a lot of reading because a captain has so much he needs to learn. Start creating your future right now. And we Fixies will be right there to help you, making sure the machines you need to reach your dreams will keep on working for years and years to come. Hey there, are you ready? Uh-huh. So far, everything's exactly the same. Tula, take this, please. It worked. And pass out the tests. You may begin. These questions are different. Who had the best test? Congratulations, Tula! What am I worried about? I know everything is going to be fine. Tish! Oh, uh, well then. All of your test results are great. <sighs> Only none of you could guess what this device is. What do you mean? Isn't it a time machine? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for <laughs> automatically watering plants, that's all. You see? Cool, 
right? Wow, it's fantastic. So hang on. You guys tricked me? But you passed the test, right? Well, all right. Then I forgive you. <laughs> Money. Hello? Uh-huh. Fire, can you help me, please? Sorry, Verda. I need to go to, uh, the warehouse right away. But I helped you yesterday, didn't I? Well, I helped you the day before that. Yeah, well, what about last week? I helped you three times, remember? Well, I... Uh... You helped one another when it was time to. I don't see why you have to count. Of course not, Tula. You ask for the most help from all of us. I do not, Verda. Look how Elisa helps Professor Eugenius. And she doesn't argue with him. Of course not. She's in love with the professor. Actually, it's her job. And for helping the professor, she gets money. Hmm, money. That's a smart idea. <laughs> money constantly moves from one hand to another. A person does his job at work, and in exchange, he gets money for it. He can use the money to buy things he wants, like clothing or food. Or he can pay somebody else for their work, like getting a ride from a taxi driver, a haircut from a hairdresser, or a computer repaired by a technician. All people take part in this circulation of money. But unlike people, pixies don't use any money. We do just fine without it. <laughs> Do it like people do it. If you work for somebody, they give you money for it. And if you need some help, then you pay. And that'll stop the arguing. And all the false accusations. And those are for Simka and Dola. Now it's all fair. supposed to do with it? You don't know? You pay for someone to help you. I don't like this new idea at all. At all. Money is made out of cotton and linen. It's stronger than normal paper made out of wood, which means it doesn't rip as easily, even if you fold it thousands of times. The ink used for printing money is special, too. It won't rub off the paper or fade in the sun. And that's not all. The ink has secret additives that can only be seen if you look at the money under a special light. This helps protect people from fake money. It is for the same reason that watermarks, metal strings, and teeny tiny writing is also used on money. This writing's very hard to read, unless you happen to be a fixie. I hope I didn't say more than I should have. 
Well, all done. It's time for a test. But what are we going to print? A word with real value. Yeah, something really precious. No, it's not money. Right, it's so much better. The helicopter. It's very important, and I need your advice. Hey, uh, sorry I'm late. Oh, girls, I can hardly wait to see this. Here it goes. Hey there. Where did you get a helicopter? Professor Eugenie threw it away, but we, we fixed it. Come fly with us. Hop in. There's no way. We're busy. Doing what? Go find somewhere else to fly. You got it. No problem. Now back to our job. fly with the help of propellers. The biggest one is called the main rotor blade. When the engine turns it, the rotor pushes the air with such a powerful force that it lifts the helicopter up off the ground. Of course, helicopters can't fly as fast as airplanes, but they have the ability to easily land on a small patch of ground. And unlike airplanes, helicopters can hover in the air for a long time and even fly backwards. Digit, turn us to the left. Huh? Uh. <laughs> now, turn right and higher. Huh? Digit, uh. Fire and Nolik are being dopey, but you're smart enough to know it's dangerous. Just land it. Hang on, hang on. This is one amazing rotor-driven machine. Leonardo da Vinci himself had a design for one, and now look who's controlling it. It really is impressive. You're a total ace on that controller. And so smart. And brave. <laughs> the girls really like boys like that. That's how I roll. Sure, yeah, you're great. Now land it. Digit! <laughs> oh! Ah! The wall! <sighs> no, like, don't panic. We're gonna have to jump! Whoa! What about me? Ah! 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 Where's fire? Here! You could have crashed! And if it wasn't for us... If it wasn't for you distracting our pilot, everything would have been okay. A real pilot, you know, shouldn't get distracted. And first he has to learn how to fly on a simulator. Right, Digit? Uh-huh. That's true, but we don't have one. Don't go anywhere. Planes, helicopters, trains, and even cars are complicated machines that can be a challenge to navigate. And if you don't watch what you're doing, you can easily end up having an accident. That's why future pilots, train operators, and drivers all take comprehensive training classes that include learning how to fly a plane or drive a train using simulators. This, for instance, is an exact copy of a cockpit, only without wings and with screens for windows. You pull the controller and the cabin moves the way it would if you were actually taking off. And on the screens, the Earth is racing under the clouds. It takes your breath away. Commercial pilots are required to take part in many simulations like this before they're allowed to pilot a real airplane. Our pilot simulator is ready to go. Oh, wow. And I'll be the first one to try it. Here we go. Ah, uh, kids. Right, Digit? 
I'm only going over there just to take a look. Uh, you know how those two can behave. I'll just watch them. It's my turn again. Hey, wait! It's my turn now! Boys are just silly. They're never serious. They just joke around. Speaking of serious, we have some important business to take care of. <gasps> You're right! I can't figure out where I should put them. What about on the pack -a mat Oh, that's a very serious problem. Yeah. This is really important, not something silly like those boys are doing. The toilet. <laughs> Water from the toilet. I'm not <laughs> drinking it. Then what? Washing up? In the toilet? Come on now. Then what are you staring at inside of there? Well, I think that the toilet's broken. The water just won't stop running. Yes, yeah, so? What do you mean, so? We gotta conserve water. Simka, you're the one that taught me that. You're right, Tom Thomas. It's important not to waste water. But the problem in this toilet isn't where you were looking. Then where? Here in the tank, not the bowl. <laughs> Almost all toilets have tanks that are used for storing water. This water is flushed into the bowl when needed. Water flows into the tank through a water valve that has a float attached to it. As the water level in the tank rises, so does the float. And when there's enough water in the tank, the float closes off the valve and the water stops. But if the float happens to break, the water will keep running through the overflow tube into the bowl. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Look at this. I can't believe how beautiful it is. Ha! I see what's wrong here. This float that we're standing on, it got disconnected for some reason. That's why the water keeps pouring out. I see. And it's going down that tube into the bowl. Well, what's the problem? It's the float. It got disconnected. Can you get it back on? Nope. Sorry. Without Papoos, we can't fix it. We'll get Papus, and you, Tom Thomas, you'll guard the door. Yeah, or someone could come and flush the toilet while we're working in the tank, and we'll get flushed away. To where? Straight into the sewer. And then it's bye-bye, Tom Thomas, forever. The sewage system is a huge network of pipes that run underground. This is where the dirty water from sinks and the waste from toilets is sent. The sewage pipes then carry this dirty water to sewage treatment plants, where the water is cleaned before it is dumped into a river or the sea. Before the first sewage systems were invented, people would just dump their waste right out their windows onto the streets. Oh, the smell in the cities was just awful. Even the first sewage systems didn't put a stop to this terrible smell. This smelly problem wasn't solved until the invention of the modern toilet. At the bottom of the toilet is a bent pipe called the siphon that's filled with water that keeps the smell from getting back into the house. Don't ask me why, but no one goes through that door. It's a secret, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, ready to eat? Not now, Mom. Not even a cookie? Mm, mm. <laughs> All right. Here's what I need you to do. You guard the door so no one flushes the toilet. And that goes for you, too. Oh, it's terrible how much water's getting wasted. It's a good thing you noticed it. It was Tom Thomas who spotted it. <laughs> well, let's get to work. When your TV has broken, when your cell phone has broked, you're not the family working. Hey. Hey. Don't ask us where we're going, for it's no far and wide. I wasn't planning on it. I was getting ready to take a shower. All right, just don't touch the toilet. What's wrong with it? It's just broken. Really? Let me check it out. Huh. No! Don't flush it! Flush 
shit! Dad, why? Ugh. Why are you crying? We fixed it. You're here! I thought that you got flushed down into the sewer! We almost did, but Nolik saved us, both me and Papus. I'm Thomas. What was it that made you so sad? The toilet? Uh-huh. No need to be sad. The toilet's working just fine. Really? Yeah, I had to check it. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to go and check it, too. The toothpaste. Astronaut food. Ready, rocket ready. And who's flying to the sun? Me. I'm ready. Ooh. Real hero. Tom Thomas. Did you see? There it is. You nearly spoiled a vital experiment. Of global, interplanetary significance. Spoiled what? Our scientific testing of the latest toothpaste formula. I will brush my teeth with it. And I, as chief dentist, will be monitoring the testing. And so, I don't want you even touching it. Great. How am I supposed to fly to the sun now? Strange. They make that toothpaste for kids. So? Then why is your mom using your dad then? That's right. I'm gonna go tell her. Mom! A new toothpaste. I should test it. No, I'm using your dad, because he's a responsible person. And so am I. I'm very responsible. Who knew? Your room's a total mess. I had no time to clean it. You didn't water the plant. I forgot. Did you brush your teeth? Yeah, for a whole minute, too. You're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes, in the morning and at night. Sorry. Great toothpaste, honey. If you don't want to get a toothache, you need to take good care of your teeth by brushing them with a toothbrush and toothpaste. Toothpaste helps remove food that's stuck on your teeth, kills harmful bacteria, and keeps your teeth strong, healthy, and beautiful. Toothpaste should be in every house. Adults should use toothpaste made for adults, and kids should use toothpaste that is healthy and safe for younger teeth. It's important to make sure you're using a toothpaste that's right for your age. Tom Thomas, don't touch it! It's for the experiment! I'm just gonna smell it, don't worry. Well? It smells like bubble gum. Just a peek at the collar, that's all. Come on, do you want to spoil the experiment? Now put that toothpaste right back. Hmm. Again? <laughs> well now, so we caught you again. I want to try this toothpaste so bad, but how? Well, what if you... <laughs> Do you know how to brush your teeth correctly? Let's check. First, take your toothbrush and rinse it with water. Then squeeze on a bit of toothpaste. A small pea-sized drop is all that you'll need. Now one, brush the outside of your front teeth up and down. Two, brush the backs of those teeth from the gums on down. Three, open your mouth real wide and brush the teeth in the back. These are the teeth that you use for chewing. Go back and forth, over and over. You should brush a full two minutes, no less. Now it's time to rinse out the toothpaste from your mouth and clean the brush. That's right, the brush needs to be clean too. And please, don't be lazy. If you brush your teeth two times a day, they'll stay in great shape for many years to come. Mom, Dad, see? I've done everything. Well done. 
and I promise that I'm gonna brush my teeth the right way as long as I need to and... And twice a day? Only let me be a part of your awesome experiment, please, would ya? Well, I don't know. I think we could try it. Oh. What? Well, we also have this foam for teeth. Who's gonna test that? Me! A real hero. How many ways did we try to get him to brush his teeth before that didn't work? We never sparked his imagination before. Your idea about the experiment was brilliant. Simka, do you think we should tell him? The answer is no. We can't disrupt the experiment. <laughs> The iron. All done. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Professor Eugenia! <clears throat> yes, Elisa? The award ceremony's in an hour. You need to leave soon. I remember, Elisa. What are you getting an award for? It's the... <laughs> it's the genius of the year. Not too modest, but fair. <laughs> and well-deserved. Wow. And they're giving it to you? Well, yeah. Will they show it on TV? <laughs> Why, of course. Class. And during your speech, can you say hi to me? And me, and me. And Sipka. Right. Say something like this. I'd like to send a big shout-out to all my Fixie friends. Oh, that's a great idea. That way, everyone can know about Fixies. Professor Eugenius, didn't I see an iron in here earlier? Hmm? Huh? Oh! Oh, come on, Elisa. There's no need for that. I'm not going to argue with you. You have to look just perfect. Otherwise, everybody is going to think that I don't take care of you. First, we'll let the iron warm up, and then I can iron your suit. The most essential part of an electric iron is called the heating coil. It's hidden inside the iron sole plate. When the iron is plugged into an electrical outlet, the coil gets hot and heats up the sole. People use a hot iron to remove the wrinkles from their clothing. Irons also have a water container. When the water gets hot, it turns into steam. The steam comes out through the holes in the iron sole, making it even easier to remove wrinkles. Wow, that sure is hot. All that's left to do is pour some water into it. Professor, this is water, right? Yeah, yeah, it's water. That isn't water. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's not water, it's not water. Then what is it? Well, it's, uh, juice. Juice? Yeah, juice. Oh, no, the poor iron won't last. Phew, and it smells like crud. I broke the iron, it's awful. No, 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 Elisa, don't be so upset. Don't be so upset. It's the genius of the year ceremony, and you'll be in a wrinkled suit in front of the whole country. Oh, I won't survive. <laughs> Elisa, hang in there. Be careful, Elisa. <laughs> Oh, Elisa. Professor Eugenius, are you all right? Oh, couldn't be any better. We're gonna go fix that iron for you. And while we're doing that, you go fix Elisa. That would be great. <gasps> Look over there. I'll fix the contact. You and Nola can scrape that burnt juice off the iron. Mm-hmm. Elisa, Elisa, please wake up. Uh... We did it. Your iron is fixed. Elisa, you should see the iron. It's working. What? And I'm just lying around here? I have to hurry. Where's the iron and your suit? Wrinkled clothing is not very beautiful. And that's why since ancient times, people have been trying to find different ways to get rid of wrinkles. For example, long ago, people would put their wrinkled clothing under a heavy, flat rock. In ancient Rome, people used to beat their crinkled garments with a metal hammer. And in China, fabric was ironed with hot frying pans. Irons with a shape like what is used today appeared during the Middle Ages. 
They were made out of cast iron and needed to be heated up on a stove before they could be used. Later, people came up with irons that were heated by putting hot coals inside. And finally, in the 19th century, a convenient electrical iron was invented and has been used ever since. And the prize for Genius of the Year goes to... Professor Eugenius! Bravo! Bravo, Professor! I thank you. I give my sincerest thanks to you. And may I take this opportunity to send my greetings to Fix? Uh, uh, uh to all the fix -assists. Just give me the prize. Oh, that was quick thinking. Brilliant. He is just astounding. Perfection from head to toe. <gasps> Well, practically perfect. <laughs> Vitamins. Seven times five is 35. Seven times six... Um, uh, wait a sec. Uh, it's, uh... John Thomas, are you ready? For what? For a walk. Did you forget? Oh, yeah. I'm having such problems with my memory. I keep trying to memorize this table, but I can't. <laughs> If you want to improve your memory, you need vitamins. Vitamins? Well, how's it going, Tom Thomas? Not well. My memory's just terrible. Studying's getting me nowhere. Hey, don't be discouraged. We'll make your memory better with some vitamins. Oh, now you about vitamins. Uh, and who else? Just a school friend. Well, all right. Vitamins are very important for people's health, even though you don't need much of them. For instance, vitamin A is necessary for good eyesight and normal growth. Vitamin C helps keep you from getting sick. Vitamin D makes your teeth and bones stronger. Usually, people get the vitamins they require from a diet of fruits, dairy, vegetables, and other healthy foods. But if someone still isn't getting the vitamins their body needs, then doctors recommend taking special vitamin pills. All right, take out some vegetables and some fruit. And some berries. They have a lot of vitamins, too. Forget about it. We're strengthening your memory with vitamins. And you'll study the multiplication table at the same time. All right, then. There are three cherries in each pile. Tom Thomas eats five piles. Go on, eat, eat. So... Here's the question. How many cherries did Tom Thomas eat all together? I don't know. What'd you say? <gasps> I said I don't know. Try counting those pits, then. <laughs> huh. Fifteen. That's right. And that means that three times five equals fifteen. Now, try my problem. Tom Thomas ate three pairs of apples. That's easy. The answer's six. I just couldn't find more apples for that one. Tom Thomas, quit slacking off. To get this problem right, you have to eat the apples. They have vitamins. Anyhow, we don't have enough carrots for me to learn how to multiply by nine. All right, then. I'll help you. To multiply two by three, all you need to do is just add three twos together. It's much harder to multiply a number by nine. That takes too much time to add. That's why at schools they want you to memorize the table. But there's a simple way to multiply by nine without the table or a calculator. Let's say you need to multiply the number three by nine. Put your hands face up in front of you. Now, find the third finger from the left and bend it down. 
So what do we see? There are two fingers to the left of the bent finger and seven fingers to the right. Two and seven means that the answer is 27. You got it? Great! Let's do another problem. What is seven times nine? Here are six fingers and here are three. That's right! The answer is 63. Tom Thomas, did you eat all of that? But you're the one that told me you need to eat vitamins. That's why I got these vitamins for you. That little? What do you mean, little? There's enough in this bottle for a month. Go ahead, try one. They're very good for you. They taste good, too. <laughs> right. Better than an onion. <laughs> or radish. <laughs> Can I have another one? No, that's enough. You shouldn't take more than one vitamin every day. I remember where I saw this. I saw the same kind of bottle with a green lid over at Katya's. Speaking of memory, let's check your multiplication table. Let's say that you and Katya are each taking one vitamin a day. So, how many have you eaten after nine days? The answer is 18. <laughs> well done. It's getting better. Vitamins really work. The bird feeder. What? Oh, again! Outside the window! There! Huh, a little bird. He's beautiful! Uh-huh, only he looks sad. Just wait till he sees what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I guess he doesn't think you're funny. That's because he's cold out there. He wants to eat, that's all. Maybe we should make a feeder for the poor bird. Do you know how to make a bird feeder? No, but we both know someone who knows everything. In the winter, it's not easy for birds to find food under the snow. Luckily, many people come to the rescue. They build little houses for the birds, designed to hold food. The name for these houses are naturally bird feeders. Bird feeders can be made out of wood, plastic, or even something as simple as a milk or juice carton. Building a bird feeder by hand isn't hard to do at all. But building it is only one part of the work. What's most important is remembering to keep it filled with food. Well, shall we start? An idea. <laughs> ah! Adisa, I need some of your food for a little bird. You aren't greedy. Greedy! 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 I didn't know Adisa is greedy. Adis is greedy. You need to learn how to share. Adis is greedy. What, like there's not enough food? Not enough food, not enough food, not enough food, not enough. Wow, now there's two of them out there. Eat, there's enough food for everybody. Poor Adisa, poor Adisa. Let's bring him in here. We can open Adisa's a restaurant a for poor birds. poor little bird. Why did you scare the little birds away? That feeder's for them, get it? Just fly away. Shoo! Uh, 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 uh. He's bullying our friends. Hey, you leave, leave! You'll never chase him away now. We'll see about that. Aha! Serves you right, Pigeon. It's not nice to bully little guys. Yeah, and how about big guys? It's all right to bully them. 
The poor pigeon also wants some food. Food! Food! You sure? Sure! Winter can be beautiful, but also very cold. Animals have different ways to prepare for when the weather gets cold. Some birds gather into flocks and migrate to where it's warmer. You could almost say they're flying to a resort. Squirrels, hamsters, and chipmunks collect and store nuts, mushrooms, and pine cones. There are many people who don't have pantries that are as well stocked. Badgers and bears eat a lot of extra food in the fall and then go to sleep in their dens and burrows for the whole winter. Fish also sleep in the winter, only they're at the bottom of rivers and lakes. Frogs, snakes, and even wasps burrow in the ground, while hares, foxes, and wolves grow thick coats that protect them from the freezing cold. Although it isn't easy for them to find food. So that will be your feeder, and that new one will be for the little birds. Hey, are you taking their food again? There you go. Huh. But those little birds, they'll probably never come back here. Look, Nolik! <gasps> they came back! That's all. I'm going to bed. Please don't touch it, okay? And you won't open it without me, right? That's a deal. <sighs> Good night, Nolik. Uh-huh. And what are you doing in here? Me? Well, I was... Oh, it's a chocolate ball with a toy inside. <gasps> How interesting. Yeah, totally. Let's unwrap it and take a look. We can't. Not until Tom Thomas comes in the morning. But if we're real careful, he won't notice. A chocolate confection. Yeah. A piece of perfection. <gasps> Perhaps I'll oh. give that shining <laughs> bright. Island affection. For the chocolate confection. All that I want is to take a bite. <laughs> A bite. Well, yeah. We sure took a look. Tom Thomas won't be happy at all when he finds out you touched a chocolate ball. And you? Like you didn't touch it? I didn't. Oh, then what's that, Nolik? <gasps> chocolate? Absolutely. It's 100% natural milk chocolate. It says so right here. <laughs> the key ingredient in chocolate is cocoa beans. They are roasted, crushed, and ground. After that, the ground beans are pressed to extract the oil from them. If you mix butter, cocoa, and sugar, you'll get dark chocolate. And if you add some milk to it, then you'll get milk chocolate. Then you just warm it up, pour it into molds, and cool it down. You can add raisins or nuts into chocolate. Sometimes chocolate is even made with flavors like flowers or salt. Chocolate wasn't originally for eating. It was used in a drink made by mixing roasted beans with water and then adding hot peppers. Not every adult could drink it, let alone a child. Today, chocolate is a favorite treat the world over for children and adults alike. How can we put it back together? How about scotch tape? Come on! We'll start by warming up the chocolate so it softens up and then use that to make a new ball. And then to make it hard again... Yeah, we just cool it off. My chocolate confection has got an imperfection. Half of it's gone in.
take off the wrapper without Nolik. You really can't do it without him? I can't. I told Nolik I wouldn't. Mmm, your chocolate is gonna be delicious. Go on, you can eat a little. Hmm, if you say so, I'll eat the chocolate. But we won't open the toy without Nolik. Mmm, good chocolate. Come on, don't you want to know what the toy is? We won't tell. All right, just a peek, and we'll close it right up. What is this for? Tish! Nolik? Really? How did you get in there? Surprise! Hmm. You were in the container, the container was in the chocolate ball, and the yep. ball... That's just impossible. Ah, he went and got you two to help. We helped a little. Hang on, Nolik. You promised not to touch the chocolate till morning. And you promised not to open the toy without me, right? Oh, my The parrot. Adisa, do you want a cracker? Wow, Tom Thomas, who is that? Simka, Nolik, this is Adisa. My dad brought him from Africa. <laughs> I can't believe it! You've got a real parrot! Can he talk? My dad said that he can, but I haven't heard him yet. Well, let's see if he can. Okay, say, Adisa's a good bird. No, he should learn my name. That would be awesome. Adisa, say, Nolik. That's my name. He doesn't want to talk about you, Nolik. Hmm, maybe he doesn't know how to speak human language. Check it out! It looks like he knows how to speak dog. No, no, like he doesn't know any languages at all. Then how can he talk? Parrots can repeat many of the different sounds that they hear. For instance, a dog's bark or the ring of the phone. Parrots can also mimic words or even whole sentences of human speech. But parrots don't understand the meaning of the words they are saying. They just repeat them like a music player. Hey, hello. Hey, hello. That's why you won't be able to have a real conversation with a parrot, even if it's the kind of parrot that can talk. All right, then let's have him repeat something. Hey, Adisa, Tadish, it's the Fixie's special sign. Say it, Fixie's had a special sign, Tadish. <gasps> My dad is back. Let's hide, quickly. Hi there. Well, how's it going? You two talking to each other yet? I can't get him to say anything at all. You can't? Hmm, Adisa, how are you? This is a good parrot. <gasps> he wouldn't say anything before. Eh, he's used to talking around me. Adisa's a good parrot. Nolik, that's my name. Hmm? Whose name is Nolik? Uh, no. He was saying he's got no luck in this game. What kind of game? <laughs> Let's hide. Quickly, <gasps> hide. Uh, we were playing hide and seek. <laughs> With the parrot? Uh-huh. <gasps> Fixies have a special sign. <gasps> oh! 
Fixies have a special sign! What? Fixies? A special sign? Uh, no. It was physics. It's a special science. Uh, that's what we're studying about right now at school. You know, how special physics is. Wow, that's impressive. Um, well, keep up the good work, son. Whew. The ability to repeat what humans say is not something unique to only parrots. Crows, starlings, and other animals can do it too. And besides animals, there are also machines that can repeat human speech. For instance, when you call somewhere and hear, leave your message after the tone, what you're hearing is a voicemail machine using a recorded voice to answer the call. Another example is the voice on trains and buses that is used to announce the stops. Those voices are usually recordings that are repeated over and over. Today, there are also artificial voices on computers, tablets, and smartphones that can read text and say it out loud. But even if a machine knows what you are saying, it can't know why you are saying it. Only people can figure that out. And Fixies, of course. Huh? Tom Thomas, you're a hero. You really wiggled your way out of that one. And Adisha, bad parrot. He almost gave up our secret. Be careful with that parrot. I get it. Adisa, listen, you. Forget everything we said. And don't ever say no look. Okay? Yeah, nothing about the Fixies at all. Yeah, so if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. Got it? Oh, he's nodding. Looks like he understands. Let's get out of here so he'll forget about us as soon as possible. So if you meet a Fixie, please, don't let their secret out! Tadish, Tadish, Tadish! The Dishwasher. <laughs> Can't catch me! You won't catch me! <laughs> Enjoying yourself? Without a care in the world. What? We have more cares of both of you together! Yeah, anyone can see that. Wanna bet me? How about we try doing your job and you try doing ours? And whoever loses... ...has gotta grant the other's wish. We have a dishwasher here in the kitchen that isn't working, and you're distracting us with your nonsense. Wait a sec. Let's do it. Find the broken part. Good as done. Find it where? <laughs> you're the adults now. Go and find it. Just look out for yourselves. And you kids, time for school. And I better not hear that you were misbehaving. Was I there when they taught us about dishwashers at school? The main element of a dishwashing machine is this part called the sprayer, which looks like a propeller. After the dishwasher's pump delivers water, it is warmed, mixed with detergent, and then pushed up with high pressure. That makes the propeller spin very quickly, so it can shoot out the water with a force strong enough to wash all of the dirt off the plates and glasses. But it does it carefully, so that dishes not only come out sparkling, but unbroken as well. Is this a parent-teacher conference? It's not. It's an experiment. For today, I'm Simka. <laughs> and I'm Nolik. All right. Who's ready to tell the rest of the class what we studied yesterday? Simka. Yesterday? Oh. You forgot. Be seated. That's an F. Mm-hmm. I think the problem is in the control panel. I wonder if the dishwasher ran out of water. Ah. Papus, don't argue with your wife. Wait. This one is working. And so is this. Wash those dishes. But that would be cheating. No one will find out. The dishes will all be nice and clean, and bam, we're the winners. <laughs> 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 
Check it out. We are all done. How come the indicators aren't lit? Fixies have to fix things. And what do you call this? And you, did you both go to school today? Of course we did. I, I mean Simka, got an F for her answer. Well, thanks, Marcia. And did you play with Tom Thomas? You know that we don't show ourselves to people. Tom Thomas isn't any human. He's our friend. Either you play with him, or you both lose, just like we did. No way. We'll play another round. The earliest kitchenware appeared about 7,000 years ago. Early people made these containers from stone or wood. Another kind of container for holding food was woven baskets. The baskets would be lined with clay for durability. Once, one of these baskets fell into a bonfire, and lo and behold, the wood on the outside burned away, while the clay was now hard as a rock. That discovery led to the invention of clay pottery that is still in use to this very day. Later on came the development of glass, metal, and cast iron cookware. The world's richest people can even have food served to them on dishes of silver or gold. Today, kitchenware is not only a practical convenience, but it can decorate any home as well. Forget it. This is impossible. Let's just tell them we give up. Zinka, how come this button is crooked and not sticking out? Cause the button got jammed! Yeah! No way! You figured out what was wrong! <laughs> I'm glad I kept dragging this around. Diddy! One... Papus, two, we fixed everything! Really? Does this mean you're playing with him? Four. What? You think we're some quitters? Ha! Five. Then which one of us is the Ready winner? Ready or not, here I come. Let's call it a draw. Each team gets one wish. Our team mm. wants you to fix my arm. And you finish this game with him. Piece, Piece of, of cake. cake. Mm. <laughs> the coffee maker. Hi there, Tom Thomas. Are you ready for school? Uh-huh. And you? I'm helping Masia today for school. Three more patients? How in the world can I do it all? I have that new equipment being delivered, and I'm leading this week's case presentations. Oh, well. Somehow I'll have to figure out how to do it. Um... Good morning. Yeah, just great, huh? I got work piled up to the ceiling. Okay, a cup of coffee is the only thing that can save me today. Now what? The last thing I need is to be late. The coffee maker started its cleaning cycle. She'll have to wait. <clears throat> What's the problem? Why don't you work? Are you going to work or what? <clears throat> oh, the poor coffee maker. Oh, Tom Thomas's poor mother. That's enough. Work already! What is going on today? <laughs> hey, Mom, come on. Let me give it a try. I can't take any more of this. We've got to help her. I really hope nothing broke in there. Don't worry, we'll get it working. Just distract your mom. Mom, and what if the coffee maker just started working again right now? Would that save your day, you think? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Early coffee makers would do nothing more than heat up the water and force it through the ground coffee. Today's generation of devices are often called coffee machines. They can do so much more and even remove the mineral deposits themselves. These machines can make your coffee any strength and add milk and sugar if that's how you like it. And most conveniently, they can grind the coffee beans right before brewing. Just press the button and the fresh cup of coffee is ready. And that aroma. The main thing with any coffee maker is to be nice to it. Then you just give it some time, and it starts working by itself. That is just absurd. Restarting it is the first step. Simka, get over there and open and close that contact. Mm -hmm. You see? That's what I was talking about. A coffee maker isn't alive. It's a machine, that's all. Then how come you hit it like you did? Hmm. But if you're really nice, 
eyes to it and you pet it, then she'll purr. Hear that? It liked that a lot. Coffee Maker, blink to us when you're ready to start working. Turn on the display. Mm -hmm. See that? It answered us. <gasps> it behaves like it's really alive. Well, Coffee Maker, make coffee. It's impossible. Today, time for a little surprise. Just don't give up our secret. You fixed it somehow. What's your secret? It's simple. If you handle appliances with care, then they'll take care of you. <sighs> the magic taste of coffee was first appreciated in Arabia. And that's why the most well-known variety of coffee is called Arabica. Coffee trees grow throughout the world in mountain regions where the weather is warm and humid. The branches of coffee trees get covered with coffee berries. But to make the coffee drink, we don't need the berries, just the seeds inside. After the coffee beans are roasted and then ground, hot water is added. Different cultures serve coffee differently. Some serve it hot, some cold. With sugar, with milk, with ice cream, with cinnamon, with ginger, and even with salt and pepper. They say that coffee gives people energy and helps them from feeling tired. But it's important not to drink too much. Ah. Tom Thomas, you're a powerful wizard. <laughs> she believes it. <laughs> it's remarkable. I can't believe an ordinary coffee maker can be so emotional. <laughs> Poor thing. Forgive me, huh? And that's not all. If you take care of your coffee maker and you're nice to it, it can even... it can even... Sing a song. Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. <laughs> I've got to be hearing things. <laughs> You've got me under your spell, Tom Thomas. Time to go, <laughs> Augustine. <laughs> oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine. Why did you start singing? Sorry, I got carried away. <laughs> and I got carried away. Sing me that song again, will you? Oh, my dear Augustine, Augustine, Augustine. Oh, my dear Augustine, everything's gone. Fasteners. And of course, all of the appliance's parts must be fastened good and tight. What are you doing, colleague? Today, Lisa is returning from her vacation. And so, I decided before she gets back, I'll clean up the laboratory. A noble initiative. Now, where was I? You were saying all parts have to be fastened. <laughs> You're right. And what kinds of fasteners can you name? Fire? Uh, a screw? Uh huh. And what else? Uh, another screw? <laughs> that would make a total of two screws altogether. Simka? To fasten wood or plastic parts together, you can use nails. Nails are hammered in with a hammer. In metal or stone, you need to first drill holes for the screws. To help a screw hold better, it can be inserted into a special fastener called an anchor or wall plug. The difference between a machine screw and a wood screw is that wood screws have pointy ends. Machine screws go into holes that already have a thread or into a nut. And what if there aren't any screws or nails around? Well, then a fixie can turn himself into a screw and screw himself in. Like this. Masterfully done. Fire. Think you can do it? Of course. Yeah! Nolik? Is it okay if I won't go? What do you mean you won't go? <sighs> Wait, I started on the wrong foot. Uh, no. I, I guess it was the right one. Don't be scared. You've done this a thousand times. Uh-huh. You're right. You had to make sure the appliance was turned off first. <sighs> yeah, I should have. This time it's not going to happen to you. It's all under control. Go on. <sighs> I'm still scared to do it. How about you try again? And who came up with this dumb screw idea? 
According to legend, the screw was invented in ancient times by the great Archimedes. Using his screw-type mechanism, Archimedes built a special machine for getting water out of a canal. In ancient Rome, people used wooden screws and presses to squeeze the olive oil out of olives. Screws were also used as parts of drills or as lifting jacks. But the use of screws as fasteners did not begin until the 15th century. Soon thereafter, screws became so popular that today it's almost impossible to find an appliance made without one. And if one of these little screws should fall out, we fixies will come to the rescue. Because we don't just turn into screws when we need to hide from humans. We're always ready to do it when help is needed. No, like, let's try it together. Don't be scared. We're here with you. Ready? And... <laughs> Nolik, watch me, son. I haven't screwed myself in in over a hundred years, but I'm not scared. <laughs> Do you see that? It's a piece of cake. Grandpus? I'm stuck. It's all my fault. There's no need to worry. Professor Eugenius, can you help <laughs> us unscrew Grandpus? I'll be right with you. <laughs> it got a bit rusty. It's probably old age. I know what will help. A drop of oil. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> Professor Eugenius, are you okay? I'm okay. Thank you for asking. Look out! It's going to fall! We need to fasten the shelf to the wall! <laughs> no, like, help! We can't do this! Simka, I'm scared too. Nolik, save me! <sighs> What's going on out there? No big deal, colleague. I just got a little bit buried. <clears throat> Will anyone unscrew me? I wish I could. And we're holding up the shelves. And Nolik? Me too. I did it. I screwed myself in. Well done, Nolik. I knew you could. And who's going to help us now? Elisa will get here shortly. All right. We'll wait for Elisa. Yeah, just as long as her return flight isn't delayed. <gasps> The wheel. 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. And 101, 102, 103, 104, oh, I and 100 and... No, Lick! Hey, come on! Tom Tom has promised to give me a ride outside on his bicycle. I gotta get going. Lucky you. I'd love to ride on a bike. Yeah, it would be a lot of fun. You're not allowed to go. Why can't we? Tom Thomas isn't your friend, all right? He only invited me. If you want to take a ride on a bicycle, then go find your own human friend to invite you. Well, Tom Thomas, you ready to go? We can't. There's no way we can ride this. The tire's got a hole. I try to fill it, but the air comes out. Well, then what should we do? I thought you'd know what. You're the fixie here. We, I mean, I didn't study it yet. Hang on! Tula, did you? Wait a sec. We found a hole in one of the tires of the bicycle. Hmm. You mean the one that only gives rides to friends? Don't be like that. Please help me out. I thought Tom Thomas was only a friend of yours. Uh, why don't you go and ask him yourself? He could be your friend, too. For thousands of years, wheels have been helping people all over the world. The wheel's ancestor is a lock. People would put logs under heavy loads to move them. Then people came up with the idea of slicing the log and connecting the slices with an axle. And there it was, the wheel. Wheels made life more convenient. Later came wheels with spokes, metal rims, and rubber tires. Soon people were wheeling around the world in and on all sorts of vehicles. Potters, mills, clocks. There are just so many different uses for a wheel. And with the steam train, steamboat, and cars, wheels spread all over the world. They even reached the planet Mars. 
The wheel really is one of the simplest and yet most amazing of all human inventions. Whew, it's off. So what's next? Now you take out the inner tube. You mean this rubber thing? Yeah, that's your inner tube. There's a hole there somewhere. Pump it up, Tom Thomas. Then we can see where the air is coming out. <laughs> That's not a good way to find the hole, Noe. Why is it good? Because the hole might be really tiny. Then how do you find it? To find it, we need water. How come? Yeah, how come? Now I get why we need water. There, see those tiny bubbles? Yeah, do you see them? That's the air from inside of the tube. That means the hole is right there. Nolik, you're a genius. Hooray! Here's the hole I found. Look! Will you let me put on the glue? In my pack -a mat I have just the right kind for this. The hole is right here, right where I found it. But first, we have to make sure that the rubber is dry. Looks like it's dry. Then let's put the glue on. It's all fixed. Finish! All right, it's ready to go. Hooray! Digit Tula, you coming with us? I don't know. We weren't invited. I'm sure he'll invite you. Right, Tom Thomas? Of course I will. We're friends, aren't we? <laughs> Let's get going! The copy. Elisa! Don't worry, I found it. Uh, no, I didn't find it. Elisa! Elisa! I hear you! I'm coming, Professor Eugenius. Have you seen this umbrella anywhere? Looks like the professor lost his umbrella again. <gasps> More than one? Look at all these flyers! No, like, they're all copies of one flyer. Elisa prints lots of them so she can hang them up all over town. A copier is a device for making multiple copies of a single picture or document. An image that needs to be copied is placed on a piece of glass under a lid. The photocopier shines a bright light on it so it can take a clear picture. Then the image is printed onto paper with the help of special ink and a rotating drum. This way, you can make identical copies over and over again from one original until the ink or the paper runs out. What happened, Professor Eugenius? Oh, oh I, uh, my briefcase. I can't find it anywhere. Oh, you're so absent-minded. First it was the umbrella, now it's the briefcase. Oh, is that for me? I don't do it on purpose. Well, we'll find your briefcase. I'll go design a new flyer for that, and I'll print those out, too. Ah, I just remembered. Remembered where you left your briefcase? Not that. This morning, I forgot to drink my tea. <laughs> so we need to find your tea as well. It's so dark inside of here. Quiet! Elisa's coming up. We have to hide. Where is that one about the briefcase? Here's the flyer for missing keys, the one for the phone. 
The flyer for when the professor gets lost. <laughs> Here, a missing briefcase. Excellent. <laughs> Looks like she's gone for now. And where is Nolik? <laughs> There's Nolik, in printed form. <gasps> he got stuck inside the copier. We have to go and save him. Save him? We all need to be saved, Tula. If Elisa takes these flyers and hangs them up, the whole city will find out about Fixies. So what do we do then? Wait. Uh, oh, we can use those liquid erasers to paint over Nola. Simka, look! Here's another Nolik! Oh, here comes another one. <laughs> Make sure he's covered. And here. <laughs> Not everybody has the opportunity to enjoy seeing the paintings of the great masters. But thanks to copying technology, these pictures are well known all over the world. Young artists and sculptors can learn their craft by studying and copying the great art line of the past. It's good to have copies of important documents, just in case. What if the original of a document happens to get destroyed? At least, there will be a copy. Copies are generally very helpful, but not all copies are good. Some copies called forgeries are bad. A forgery is a copy of a picture, document, or even money that is presented as the original. Making forged copies is illegal. You can even be sent to jail for making copies like that. And a little bit here. so bright in there. I almost went blind. And we had to take every one of those copies and paint over all of them. So that humans won't find out about Fixies. It's a shame I wasn't there. I could have helped you out with that. Professor! I'm leaving! <sighs> there they are. <laughs> Elisa! <laughs> Elisa! Elisa! She just left to hang up the flyers. Yeah, and I found the briefcase in the umbrella myself. I have to call her and tell her. Uh, 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 where's my phone? Have I really lost it? Don't you worry, Professor. If you can't find it, Elisa's got a flyer for your phone already. <laughs> What's important right now is that Elisa doesn't go missing. <laughs> <laughs> the umbrella. Well, so why isn't it working? We'll figure it out, colleague. Let's start by disconnecting the hoist. Otherwise, you know... <laughs> ah, Tula, you're finally here. Where have you been? Looking for an umbrella. What? What do you need an umbrella for? Because it'll be pouring rain today. Where'd you get that idea? I heard it. You're leaving already? Yeah, I have to wash the car before I go in. Ah, then I'll take an umbrella to work. Hmm? <laughs> you know the omen, dear. Once you wash your car... It'll rain? <laughs> <gasps> oh! Tom Thomas's mother was just joking. You don't joke with omens. It's going to be raining for sure. But it's no big deal if you've got an umbrella. <laughs> Umbrellas are an ancient invention. They're almost 3,000 years old. In China and Egypt, umbrellas were made out of leaves, feathers, and paper. Servants carried them over their kings to protect them from the hot sun. When umbrellas became fashionable in Europe, people started using them as cover from rain. The most convenient are folding umbrellas. Their design is simple. The edge of the fabric is attached to ribs. When you open an umbrella, the ribs spread out in all directions and stretch the fabric over your head. Automatic umbrellas can open very quickly. Just press the button and it pops right open, keeping your clothes dry as if there was no rain at all. An unopened umbrella can be used as a cane. And if the umbrella's handle is also collapsible, then it can be stored in a bag when it isn't needed. Well, hmm, the contacts are normal. And oh 
all of the wires are in place. Then what's the problem? I don't know. We're gonna have to test it. Tula, put away your umbrella. But the omen calls for rain. Ah, one omen doesn't count. Manipulator, get me a screwdriver. Understood. Executing. Oh, the manipulator's joints are creaking. See? That's an omen of rain, too. <laughs> it's an omen that it's time for a little oil. Wanna help me? Just a sec. I'll help you. Well, so much for that, Omen. It's going to rain anyhow, I know it. Just take a look at those flowers drooping. Isn't that an omen? The reason that they're drooping is because Elisa is on vacation. And my colleague forgot to water that plant. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll finish the repair and I'll water them, I promise. Ah! This is the reason that it broke. This damaged part has to be replaced. Come on and help me. I'll get a replacement from the warehouse. Fire's flying low, isn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what? When birds start flying really low to the ground. <laughs> Fire isn't a bird. But he's flying low, didn't you see? Tula, give me a sledgehammer, would you? And put away the umbrella already. Look, there isn't a cloud in the sky. That's because it's morning. You have to know this, Owen. <laughs> When there's no clouds in the morning, then in the afternoon, it's sure to... We're standing inside with a roof over our head. It can't break! Look, it's raining! You see? I told you so, and you didn't believe me. Size machine. Nolik? I'm not here. You haven't seen me today at all. What's up with you? There's gonna be this race and it starts really soon. It's the boys against the girls, their team against ours. And what? And what? I'm the smallest one on the team. And I'll let everyone down. That's why I'm hiding. Cause I don't want my team to lose. You can't just give up. You can learn to run faster if you want. You think? Of course, that's what exercisers are for. You need a treadmill to get stronger. Class! And where can we get one? We'll make it ourselves. Exercise machines were invented so people could work out without going outside. For instance, a treadmill lets you walk or run for a very long time while moving in one place. A treadmill's main part is a conveyor belt that is driven around by an electric motor. Today's smart treadmills have the ability to measure your speed, the distance that you've run, your heart rate, and even the results of previous workouts.
There, it's all done. Teesh! It's time to start your first training session. How will I learn to run really fast? If you keep turning it so slowly. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, that's a little too fast. Oh, sorry about that. I got it. That's what you call training. Tom Thomas, so, what do you think? Maybe I trained enough? Not yet. You need to keep going. Oh, I can't do this any longer. Let's stop. <sighs> no way. Turn the handle. Yeah. There are all sorts of exercise machines to help you improve your health. This one simulates skiing. It exercises your arms, legs, and heart. And this one you can row like a rowboat. And if pedaling's your thing, an exercise bike lets you get a great workout, no matter how bad the weather is outside. There are also weight training machines. These machines can help you build big, strong muscles and tone the shape of your body. However, you can still get great exercise without these bulky machines. There are plenty of much simpler devices that you can find room for in any house. Like a chin-up bar for doing pull-ups, a wall-mounted ladder or rope for climbing, or jump ropes, weights, hula hoops, or balls. The important thing is to just exercise. <laughs> okay, girls, <laughs> hold on to your hats. Oh, how scary. We'll show them who's gonna win. Right, Tula? I'm gonna do my best. Tula will definitely beat Nolik. We gotta step it up. It's time to get this race going. Runners, are you ready? I'm ready. ready. On your marks, everyone get set, go! Go, Come on, Go, 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 is greater. Oh, now the girls are gonna win. Nola will never catch up with Tula. Oh my gosh! Nola he appears to be gaining ground. But look at him! He's looking for the head! Go on, Nola, go! You got it, buddy! Come on, buddy! They look at him, he's flying! All of that work on the exercise machine really helped! Nolik, where are you going? The finish is there! Thank you, Nolik. You're my hero. Team won the race? We did. It's a tie. Tom Thomas, that's just not fair. It was a tie. And a very noble one. All right, you just wait for the next race. Nolik's gonna win it big time. Now it's time for you all to get up on that winner stand. <coughs> oh no. All the first places are taken. For you? We'll find one. The program. All right. Let's check him. Say good morning. Good morning. Lift your arm for me. Lower your arm down. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Professor Eugenius. Mm. Hello, Fixies. Nice to see you today. So what is it you're inventing today? I'm improving the manipulator. Now the device has sight, hearing, mm -hmm, and even a voice. Good morning. Oh, wow. If this thing had a brain, it would be just like a human. But it does have a brain. See how Professor Eugenius attached a computer to the mechanical arm? The computer's a brain, you mean? Well, not quite. The computer's just a piece of metal. Good morning. What makes a computer intelligent are the programs inside. Imagine that you came home from school and found a note from your mom. Change your clothes, eat lunch, 
clean the dishes, and do your homework. That's about what a computer program is like. It's a set of commands that a computer carries out in sequence, one after another. Programs are also called applications. There are a lot of them in computers, tablets, and phones. It's the computer programs that make these devices so smart. There we go. I have tweaked the program. Let's see. Now the manipulator, upon my command, uh, uh, is going to wash this dirty mug. Manipulator, a dirty mug. Now, eliminate the problem. Executing. The problem has been eliminated. <laughs> I don't think it understood what you said. <laughs> Let's try it again. Clean up the shards. Don't understand. Well, just sweep the floor. Don't understand. Oh. How about rid the laboratory of any foreign objects? Understood. Executing. I see two foreign objects. Hey! What are you doing? Hey! Stop it right now! They're not foreign objects, they're my friends. That's better. Another foreign object. I'm not foreign. Another foreign object. I belong object. here. Foreign. I belong here. Foreign. I belong. Foreign. <laughs> Enough! Stop it! Down! What? Can't get us? You need a longer arm. Understood. Extending arm. Stop! No. Sit! Lie down! Down! Oh, over here. For sure, it must have some glitch. Ah! Modern devices often work under the command of different computer programs. And these programs can malfunction. For instance, a car alarm might go off for no apparent reason. Or a computer stops following your commands and starts doing strange things on its own. Or your phone freezes up and doesn't respond no matter how many times you poke at it. If this happens to one of your devices, it's recommended that you restart it. Or turn off your device and turn it back on again. Sometimes it helps and the device comes back to life. But if that doesn't help, you may need a repairman to figure out if it's a problem with the program or with the device itself so he can fix it. How are we going to stop this thing? Oh, we need to disconnect the manipulator from the computer. That's brilliant. I'll distract him and you pull the plug out. <laughs> Don't. That's my sensitive spot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> and one. Ow. Yeah. And two. Ah, I see what's wrong. What? what? The program has a little mistake. There we go. Now the manipulator won't act up. Let's check it. Hang on, no way. That's enough for today. We still have to clean up this mess. Don't worry. The manipulator can help us out. The window. Ugh. Hi there. We're all up. Ugh. What are you doing? I'm washing our windows. Uh, it looks like that thing's doing the washing. You guessed it. It's a window washing robot. I borrowed it from a neighbor to try it out. We should buy one for ourselves. I don't get it. We've already got one robot. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, robot. So we'll have two. One for the floors and one for windows. I could clean the windows. But it can be dangerous work. 
<laughs> What's so dangerous about it? I'll just go and wash them right now. And instead of a robot, we'll buy something uh, useful, like a skateboard for a boy. I've already got one. So you'll have two. Class. Uh-huh, if you say so. There just so happens to be a dirty window in your office. Let's see how you do with that one. Consider it done. Mm-hmm. And we'll clean the tiles with the robot. A window is much more than just a hole in the wall. Windows provide houses with light, ventilation, and views to the world outside. Modern windows are made with several layers of glass. Between each layer is a space that's filled with air. The air works as insulation to keep heat from escaping outside. Do you know how to tell how many layers of glass your window has? Just shine a flashlight at it. The number of reflections tells you the number of layers. Whoa, what an amazing appliance. Let's go and take a closer look. You really buy me a new skateboard, Dad? That's what I said, but first, I've got a window to wipe. All right, robot, we'll show you. Tom Thomas, Dad can show him himself. <laughs> we really live on a super high floor. Yeah, but the robot isn't afraid of heights. <sighs> I'll start from this corner. It'll take you forever that way. Admit it, the robot works better. We won't. We're gonna win this thing. What is he doing? I'm not sure. <sighs> huh? Mom! Mom! The robot made such a mess in there! It's impossible. Look! <laughs> Good joke. Just wait. Get how you're cleaning it. Easy. You can talk? You've got to be kidding. And you are misbehaving. You guys? You're the ones trying to stop me? You tried to make the robot look bad, so we had to defend it. It's only because my dad told me I'd get a skateboard. Yeah? For doing a bad thing? Ah, oh, aren't you ashamed of yourself? I am. You learned your lesson, and don't forget, Fixies look out for appliances. The dwellings of most ancient people had basically no windows at all. There may have been a hole up above for letting out smoke from a fire, but that was it. Later, people started splitting open their walls, but the openings were so small that very little light would ever get inside. Hmm. The size of windows grew quite a bit over time. People would cover them with animal skins, fabric, paper, or wooden planks to protect themselves from the cold and the wind. When people learned how to mine valuable minerals, they began to cover window openings with thin sheets of a mineral called mica. Windows made of glass were very expensive, and only the richest people could afford them for their homes. But today, it's hard to imagine a window anywhere not covered in glass. <sighs> Everything's washed. And what about the outside? Forget it. I... I quit. Would you wash the back with the robot? Yeah, consider it done. Yeah, you're right. I see. It really is a great appliance. And that washer's defender is even better. You're right about that. Tish! The spider. Chusaka, Chusaka. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? I'm petting Chusaka. How come? Because huh? it makes her feel good. Just don't rub her fur off. <laughs> You're just jealous, guys, because you don't have any pets of your own. What do you mean? We've got a pet. Yoo-hoo, Buggy! Buggy! She was in the vent the last time I saw her. 
Insect is really your pet? Ha! <laughs> what a joke. Buggy's a spider. She's not an insect at all. But isn't a spider a kind of insect? Insect is the term used for mosquitoes, flies, beetles, dragonflies, butterflies, ants, and many others. Spiders certainly look a lot like insects. They have very similar legs. But spiders aren't insects. They're arachnids. Insects have six legs, while spiders have eight of them. Many insects can fly, but spiders can't. But spiders can move spider webs. They may look beautiful, but really they are traps for hunting insects. How come your buggy has five legs instead of eight of them? I don't know. <laughs> she lost them somehow. Anyhow, she can do lots of tricks. Hello, buggy. How do you do? We know how to do that trick. Chusaka, shake. Just see that? And I bet your buggy can't do this. Chusaka, sit. Buggy, sit. Why aren't you sitting? Lie down. Your turn. Lie down. Watch me. Like this. Lie down. She can't do that trick. Her fifth leg must be in the way. Lie down. Lie down, I told you. What, what kind of pet are you anyway? You can't even do a simple trick. Hey, where are you going? Wait, Buggy, don't go. No, like you should be ashamed of yourself. But why is she acting so stupid? <gasps> Didn't you say that she was your friend? And what? Well, you shouldn't yell at your friends like that. She's right. What kind of friend are you? I'll go find her. And apologize. <laughs> Buggy! Do you hear me? having pets to live with them in their homes. Dogs, cats, hamsters, parrots, fish, turtles. Some folks even get crocodiles. And the bigger the animal, the more work it takes to take proper care of it. But every pet needs love and care, no matter what size it is. Fixies like to have pets, too. All sorts of little bugs, spiders, and flies. Fixies treat them as friends and take care of them. Of course, a little spider isn't as smart as a dog, but they also can be trained. There are some fixies who have managed to domesticate such big insects as bees, beetles, and dragonflies. Fixies fly on their backs and use them to carry heavy loads. That's it. I'm stuck all alone in here. Forever. Simka? Oh, how did you find me? Buggy let me down here. Buggy, you didn't ditch me. I'm sorry. I promise I'll never ever yell at you again. Ow, my leg. Hang in there, Nolik. We'll get you out. It was so scary. You could have died down there. Yeah, I almost died. But you know what? Buggy saved me. Yeah, that's cooler than learning how to shake hands. Buggy sure is a true friend indeed. Does your leg really hurt a lot? Ah! <gasps> <laughs> nah, it doesn't really hurt. I'm fine. I was just joking. Germs. <laughs> Hooray! Lunch! Tom Thomas, you brought your ball to lunch? It's filthy dirty. Don't you know how many germs are on it? Wash yourself up. Look, they're clean. 
Here, it's for you. I saw that. Now go back and wash your hands. Why? There are germs on Tusaka? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, give it back. Again? Hi, Tom Thomas. Uh -huh. Why are you so angry? You go wash your hands five times solid. This is germs, that is germs. Maybe they don't even exist. Of course they do. It's just that they're so tiny, you can't see them without a microscope. Tom Thomas, let's go into your dad's office. He's got a microscope. We can take a look at some germs. Germs, or microbes, are such tiny creatures we need a microscope to see them. But they live everywhere. In the earth, the water, throughout the air. They're on everything, even on us. Some microbes are able to move around with the help of filaments or tails. Lots of microbes are harmless, but there are some dangerous ones too. If they get inside of you through your nose or your mouth, you could end up with a sore throat or a stomach ache. Turn it a little more. Stop, now take a look. <gasps> it's horrible. Hey, let me take a look. Wow, they're so scary. Hang on, do I really have germs like that living on my hands too? You got it. But I washed them, uh, seven times. With soap? No, just water. You have to use soap to get rid of germs, not just water. So which soap should I use? Either, this one, that one, they are both antibacterial, so they kill bacteria. And what about germs, will it kill them? Of course. Bacteria is just another name for germs. They're the same thing. Wash. Tom Thomas, give me a drop of that liquid soap. I want my hands to be real clean. Good job. That's the spirit. Hooray! We're clean! Let's go put that puzzle together. All right, but doesn't it have germs all over it? And they're on the soccer ball. What are we going to do? I think we should clean them with soap. No, clean the whole room. You're right. surrounded by millions of invisible microbes, including those that can cause an illness. But there is no need to be afraid of them if you follow these simple rules. Eat only washed fruits and veggies, keep your home clean, and wash your hands very well with soap, preferably an antibacterial one, and every day. Antibacterial soap protects you for a few hours after it's been washed off. It not only cleans your hands, but also stops germs from reproducing. There are useful microbes, too. Some bacteria can be added to milk to make yogurt and cottage cheese. Others are used for purifying water. Even inside of humans are a lot of useful bacteria that help their bodies digest food. <gasps> Nolik, what do you think? Are there microbes living on the soap? I don't know. We should wash that, too, just in case. Hey, what are you two doing in here? Washing the soap. With soap? So there won't be any germs on it. You've got to be joking. Listen, getting rid of all the microbes is impossible and unnecessary. You just need to protect yourself from the bad ones. Ah, uh, bacteria gone. Tom Thomas, I need a minute so I can... Mop your room. But I already washed it. What a good boy. The table's sparkling. <gasps> Just look how clean it is in here. Great job. What's going on? Nothing. You're not getting sick, are you? No. Tom Thomas, you did a great job in here, only you're taking this cleaning way too far. Understand? I've got you. And do you get it? Me? Get what? That the most important thing is to make sure you wash your hands with soap. Okay. To the germ fighters! <laughs> Making the world safer, one less germ at a time. 
The Sith. Dad, what time is Mom getting back from her conference? She'll be back in an hour. What surprise can we make for her? Let's bake her buns with raisins in them. They're her favorite. That's a great idea. Ah, uh, where do we keep our recipes? Huh, they're not here. Where could they be? What are you looking for? <gasps> a recipe. They're in the drawer by the stove, over there. Great, thanks a lot. Here they are. That's fantastic. Let's see, what do we need? Milk. Flour. Eggs. Some cinnamon and raisins. The cinnamon's right there. But you're out of raisins. Uh, we're out of raisins. Can we make them without? No, Mom loves them with raisins. Ah, it's too late. The stores are closed. Cereal! We got cereal! And so? It has raisins, look! Tom Thomas, you're a genius! Why don't you be in charge of the raisins? Tom Thomas, what does Mom use to knead dough? The mixer. How about the mixer? Hmm, not a bad idea. I don't think you have enough raisins. But you haven't made the dough yet. It'll be really quick with the mixer. All right, Dad, we'll see who finishes first. Come on, faster, faster! Don't be so clumsy. If you think you're so good, then why don't you help? Fine, we'll help. <laughs> Catch! What's going on in there? We picked everything off the top. We have to dive down. Then dive. Hurry up. Dad's almost done putting the mixer together. Where are the raisins? It's dark down there. We can't see any raisins. Well, try diving again. No, this way won't work. We need a filter. In order to separate seeds from the husk, air from dust, and water from harmful particles, we use filters. The simplest kind of filter is a metal netting. These kinds of filters are installed in washing machines and dishwashers. They keep the water clean by capturing small debris and sand. As a result, machines work better and go longer without breaking. In other words, filters help separate what is wanted from what isn't. I think I know what Mom uses. Perfect! That filter's a sieve. Grab the bowl and hold the sieve over it. Pour in the cereal. Now shake it so the tiny flakes fall through the sieve and the raisins stay in it. Turning the mixer on. Then you need to shake faster. <gasps> Dad, you're spraying the batter all over the kitchen. The mixer's too powerful. The mixer's fine. The batter's too liquid. You have to add flour. Add flour. Oh, right. How do you know all this? Shake it some more. No need. I shook all the flakes through it. Glass. It really worked. Dad! What? Ready to put in the raisins? Look at you! How did you get them all out so fast? By using our sieve, Dad! Do you know the story about Cinderella? Her evil stepmother wouldn't let her go to the ball. Instead, she poured peas into a sack of cinder and ordered Cinderella to pick them all out. But what most people don't know is that it was Fixies who helped her separate the peas from cinder with the help of a sieve. That's right! Cinderella was friends with the Fixies. You can find evidence of Fixies in a number of tales. Don't Tom Thumb or Thumbelina remind you of somebody? How did these tiny characters make their way into fairy tales? It's quite possible that long ago, a Fixie who wasn't paying attention was spotted by a storyteller. And that became the inspiration for countless tales. All right, you can open your eyes. Ta-da! Beautiful. Whose idea was this? Tom Thomas. Mm, they're so good. 
What recipe is this? Tom Thomas found it. And you remembered that I love raisins. Tom Thomas sifted them out of the cereal. Well done, Tom Thomas. All by yourself? Shh. I should say so. Tish! The television. Now watch carefully. First I put some of the yellow. Then I add some of the blue. Mix them together. And now we've got the color green. Isn't that great? Class! And it's not just paint either. Your television works by mixing colors too. Really? No way. That's embarrassing. No, like you should know that by now. We live inside of that television together with Papas and Masia. Come on! The picture on a TV screen is made up of tiny glowing dots that are either red, green, or blue. When blue and green dots are glowing together, we see the color light blue, like in a clear blue sky. When green and red mix, we see a yellow sun. And when all three colors shine brightly together, then we see white on the screen. It may be hard to believe, but it's true. All of the colors on the screen are made up of only three colors. Red, green, and blue. So everything that's on the TV screen all comes from three colors. Red, green, and blue. Isn't that great? Where do you learn all this stuff, huh? Actually, don't you think it's about time we got you a new TV? What do you say? Sure! <sighs> Great. And then I'll take this one with me to work. We just started shooting a new show about old things. Hooray! I'm gonna get an awesome new TV! Simka Nolik! Did you hear that? Are you here? They must have gone home for something. <gasps> Wait a sec! Their home is... Their, their home is in the television! This is such a nice home for us. It's okay. We'll move into one of the other TVs here. The one in the living room? Why not? It's a nice new one with a huge flat screen. We're gonna have to leave the sofa behind. What? There's just not enough room in that TV. Then I'm not going to move there. Then where? Into the fridge? No, thank you. My nose is running. How about the stove? And what about us? You're the one that says that a stove is off limits for kids. Maybe the microwave will do. No, it's dangerous there. Then, in the piano. What piano? There's no piano in Tom Thomas's apartment. What a shame. A piano is the best place of all to call home. Huh? It looks like he already put us into a box. We're trapped. Good. I changed my mind. I really don't want to get a new TV. Hmm. Why don't you want a new one? I'm just used to this one. You're a junk collector. <laughs> uh-huh. Just like you, Dad. People have always dreamt of seeing things that are far, far away. All of us have heard fairy tales about crystal balls and magic mirrors. But the magic of television began only a hundred years ago. The screens on the first TVs were so small that people had to attach magnifying glasses to them to make the picture big enough for watching. Ever since those first TVs, both the outside and the inside of this amazing device continue to change. Bulky picture tubes have been replaced by electronic chips. Screens have grown wider and wider as TV sets have changed from big heavy boxes to flat light screens that can hang on the wall like a picture. And someday, real soon, it's quite possible that TVs will be made to roll up like a rug and people will be able to carry them anywhere. All right, I'll put it back, but under one condition. If it breaks, we'll buy you a new one right away. Yeah, sure. We'll never let it break, right? Never, never ever! Well, that's that. The color is completely wrong, see? I guess we're going to have to throw it out after all. Wait, wait, wait. I know how to make it work perfectly. Watch this. One, two, and three. How did 
did you do it? I just mixed the three colors together. Like I told you, red with green and blue. Teesh! The submarine. And the submarine disappeared into the ocean deep, leaving the vicious sharks high and dry. Ugh, that cartoon was super class. Splendid. Ugh, I wish we had a submarine too. What do you say we make one? But we don't know anything about building a submarine. What makes you say that? The most important thing for a submarine is to be airtight so that it's impossible for water to leak in from outside. And inside, there needs to be a reserve of air for breathing. For a submarine to go underwater, it uses special containers. When the containers are filled with water, the submarine becomes heavy and starts submerging. When it's time to take the submarine back up to the surface, the water in the containers is switched back for air and the light submarine climbs. And what are we going to make it out of? Out of, uh, broken toys. And where are we going to sail her? In the aquarium. Silly. Nolik's little and he's not scared of this. Yeah! Well, all right. Cast off the lines! The who? Unhook the rope, it means. Ah! You should have just said that. Are you ready? Time to take her down. Hooray! We're sailing! It's just beautiful in here. There they are, the vicious sharks. Time to scare them. Turning right. Go away for that one. You can't escape <gasps> from us. Please stop it. Come on, come on, come stop on. Stop torturing the fish. It's terrible. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, what was no. that? I don't know. There's algae wrapped around the propeller. I want my mom to you. Just be calm. There's no need to panic. Let's try taking her up. It's not working. Of course. No wonder I was scared. And so what do we do now? How about we open the hatch door? No, we can't. The water would pour into here, and then we would all drown. Well, in that case, I don't know. I need to come up with a plan. Yeah. <sighs> the world's first practical submarine was built almost 400 years ago in England. It was made out of wood and couldn't dive very deep at all. Inside the vessel, rowers sat with oars, so it couldn't move very quickly either. About 200 years later, the oars were replaced with a propeller. But the propeller on that submarine could only be turned by hand, making it a slow submarine as well. Any good swimmer could easily outrace it. It was only with the appearance of electric motors that submarines started submerging to great depths and moving through the water at very high speed. Today's modern military submarines use nuclear reactors for power. These submarines can stay underwater for months without resurfacing. Fire, can you come up with your plan quicker? Because we're running out of air. Fire, we're gonna suffocate. No, we won't, mate. <laughs> Chances are better the fish will eat us. You never should have teased them. Yeah, we're in uh. trouble. Uh. Uh -huh. uh. Uh. Didn't I warn you, didn't I? And you wouldn't listen. You did everything just the opposite. Wait, it might work. Let's rewire the battery the opposite way. We should switch the plus and minus. How come? Because then the motor will start to turn the other way, forcing the algae to unwind. Hey, quit 
it. We won't bother you anymore, all right? Peace. Thank you so much, Tula. You really saved us. It's just because I was the one that was most frightened. No, it's because when things got really scary, you kept your cool about you. Wouldn't it be splendid if next time we built a helicopter? 